Hey, hey everyone, everyone, it's Will. And James. This is our Amazing Race 32 recap for episode 6. We're going to be talking about our Trabant trouble in Berlin, how we got down at the teledisco, the death-defying word scramble, and how we clucked our way to the pit stop. So starting off this leg of the Amazing Race, we are leaving Paris, France, and I don't know if you could tell from the timestamps of when the teams departed, but we had about a three-hour wait for Haley and Kaylin to get to the train station. So during that downtime, Will and I actually went to a hotel and did a lot of research on Berlin. We were next to the train station, but all the teams before us, we had no idea where they were or what they were doing and so we sat in this hotel next to the computer for a couple hours because it was like three in the morning staying warm it was freezing (laughs) and then we waited outside the train station for like 15 minutes and then we're like where do we go so we eventually went back to the travel agency that we got our tickets from and all the teams kind of waited until (laughs) it was time to go check in for the ticket with the train and lo and behold the blondies showed up. up. But while we were waiting for Haley and Kaylin to show up, we were kind of all huddled around these different heaters in the train station. And that's when we have a conversation with Madison and Riley and Hung and Chi to lock down a three-team alliance. All three of our teams said, hey, let's work together. Let's continue to help one another and ride this out as long as we can. And just to give a little bit of context, if you watch the bonus footage on the Amazing Race YouTube channel, when we're at the pit stop in Berlin talking to Phil, he talks to us about alliances. And prior to even going on the race, Will and I, after doing all of our rewatching of the seasons prior, we thought alliances are actually a big part of the race, whether they're shown or not. So, We told Phil, our relationship is important, but when it comes to the game, relationships with other teams are just as important. We saw it on an earlier season with the Chippendales, Trey and Lexi in the 20s. They carried that season together. So we wanted to kind of like, you know, model that. This season is different. So there's this new twist of the yield that every single team has, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, it doesn't matter it could impact your game. And so the social dynamics played a bigger part than I think we both anticipated at, up until this point of the race, just because of how much you didn't want to be yielded and you didn't want to have any like negative energy from the other teams because it just would affect, you know, you turning in yields. But not even that. Every leg has been an equalizer with the exception yeah. of Paris. So when everyone's on even playing field, You know, anything can happen. And luck, as you know by now with the Blonde Bandits, luck is a huge part (laughs) of the Amazing Race that you have to kind of consider. So we solidify this alliance with Madison and Riley and Hung and Chi, get on the train, travel to Berlin. Everyone's running out of the train station, getting into their taxis, which was chaotic per usual. And we make our way to the east side gallery of the Berlin Wall. Fun fact, our taxi driver from the train station to the gallery was from Brazil, which was very confusing because he spoke Portuguese, not German. (laughs) So we used some of the Portuguese that we knew and not the German that we knew with our taxi driver because he was from Brazil. And we got a big kick of saying, oh yeah, we were just in my house. We were literally just there. Yeah, it was a great time. (laughs) When we get to the Berlin Wall, though, this is a, I believe it's a mile stretch. It's like the longest standing section of the Berlin Wall still. All the teams are running around. No one really has an idea of what we're looking for. And Will and I stumble upon the suitcase. The clue says, take, what does it say? Drive yourself in a Trabant (laughs) to a teledisco. So you go out of the East Side Gallery. And there's a little entrance, and right in front of there, there is eight. Seven Trabant. Eight. Oh, eight Trabants. There are eight Trabants. Eight. These very old, from the 80s, cars, literal golf carts. Antique. Covered in aluminum foil. Yes. So you walk up to these cars. We go up to the very first one thinking, you know, we're going to get in it, and we'll be able to go straight because nothing's in front of us. I don't want to have to reverse. This looks confusing. <laughs> when you get into the car, there are three pages of directions It came with a manual, (laughs) y'all. It also came with a diagram on the dashboard for the actual, like, stick. So the stick was where 
like Riley said, where the windshield wipers go or your blinker or whatever, like it was there. So to pull it into gear, you had to like pull it out and go up in different directions like a tree. But to also turn the car on, you had to <laughs> put it in gear, push the clutch, and then also turn the key on. So it took, I think, all the teams about 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes to kind of get a vibe for these cars None of us immediately left this area because, A, no. you kind of had to have, like, verbal confirmation that you were okay to go because these are antiques. They obviously are renting them, so you don't – you can't mess them up. Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> but while while you are trying to figure out the Trabant, you know, our car was in front of Madison and Riley. Riley and Will are learning how to drive the Trabant while Madison and I are on the outside of the car – talking to locals to use their phone to look up where the teledisco was thankfully it was only a mile away so we're like it's not a long drive in this trabant we hop in our car and will and i already are starting this trabant journey on the wrong foot but that's because of bad luck well the first car that we were in the battery was dead like the car light had been left on or something. The, and... the the guy who was like the tech or whatever for these cars was like, Oh, this car's dead. I can't Sorry. we can't do anything about it. Go to the backup car. Yeah. So there was one extra car for all of the teams. We get in the backup car. This one starts and you hear Chi say that we're just gonna start in first gear the entire time because you legitimately could not like confidently go to a different gear. <laughs> And feel as though you'd made the right, like, change. Because the car was just so weird. I think I tried to go to second at one point. But it was just like, the car stopped. You stall. And then you had to start over. And so, you just stayed in first gear the whole time. The positive thing for the one mile distance was that you had, literally, it was an L. You went straight, left, and you were there. We finally get to 99 Revelar, where the Teledisco is located. Because I went back there for my birthday. Six oh, I months forgot later. That you went back to Berlin. So we finally arrived to this area, and the teledisco is going on. Hung and she and the beards are inside. Of course, we have FOMO. Like we wanted to like enjoy that with them, but there's no way we wouldn't have fit. No way we would have fit. So we wait for them. They get out. We get in, and we have so much fun together. <laughs> it goes in one of those moments where you are kind of removed from the race, and you kind of forget that you're racing, and it gives you time to connect with your partner. And that song was long. It was, it was a long song. I closer think it was five to four minutes. minutes. Four minutes. I was a little over three maybe and a half. Five. <laughs> I mean, it, time goes by slow when you're like in a hurry. I think it was so smoky inside. Like the fog machine kept going off and wouldn't stop. Yeah. And then the lights are flashing. So you're just like, your senses so kind are of disoriented. Yeah. And b- us being both very tall, like we're just crammed in this space. <laughs> But we made the but most it was, of it. Oh, I, I, I loved it. Have you, did you do it again? When yeah, you when I went back to Berlin for my 30th birthday, seven months after we got back from the race, I took my family there, and it was so much fun to be in the teledisco with my cousin and my sister. And it's actually a really cool area of Berlin. Like, total side note, we were there in November, so there wasn't a lot of activity. But when I went back in July, it's actually a really cool market, a lot of food vendors, a lot of really cool vintage clothing. Totally recommend it. But anyways, back to race. So we get done with the teledisco. Really cool that it printed off pictures. And that's what our next clue told us to go to the Andals Hotel. I want to say that the distance from the teledisco to the hotel. Two miles. We, from the teledisco to the hotel, right? Yeah. yeah, it was two miles. It was, But this, again, it was an easy route. So it was an L shape. So you went straight on that road, took a right, and the hotel was on that corner. Exactly. So it was a two mile little L shape. So it wasn't super complicated to get there. We eventually like see Hung and Chi going. Our car like it was the emergency brake was on. As we were getting out of the we finally got the it. teledisco part, that was a little you know minor setback, but that wasn't the main issue. As we were driving on the main road, I stayed <sighs> in the the right hand lane because. I was obviously going way slower than traffic. I was already concerned that this car wasn't going to get us there just because it was like already acting weird. A lot of things were happening just because it was very confusing to get back to where you were with the gear shifting and the instructions were not like 
super helpful. If you would have given us like a 30 minute class, I would have been fine. But this little like teach yourself moment was you know, it was a little hard. It was interesting. So our Trabant breaks down. We clearly knew what was wrong. Yeah. Because when I would try and push the clutch in, it would just make this horrendous noise. It eventually stopped, like, accelerating <laughs> altogether. It would make this awful, awful noise as you would push the gas. And so we got our car to the very edge of the sidewalk. We sat there trying to figure out, like, reevaluate our choices. What are we doing? And at that moment, production did, did step in and say, you have two options. You either fix it yourself or you have to run. Yeah. And at that point, why would we what try am to waste I, time? To what fix am I going to do? Yeah. And I get it. A What's lot a clutch? Of, and I get it. A lot of people have written us asking this question like why didn't we get a penalty at the end of the day like any self-drive tests there are you've seen it on previous seasons if something happens with the car usually a team waits for a backup car to come to their location and then they're back on the leg but as we had mentioned we already were in the backup car yeah. but because the battery was dead there was no backup car for any team so if it had not been will and i's car broken down if any other team did they would have been given the same two options we said it on the show. You either run or you fix the clutch. And those weren't like those weren't our choices. Those were what were presented That's what to we us were as a team. So we ran, but before we started to run, a, a really helpful guy on the side of the road pulled out his iPhone, showed us where to go, gave us a pretty straight path to the hotel. So we knew, okay, we're off and running 1.4, one and a half miles. And I think even though we broke down and even though we ran, we didn't lose any time. And when we got to the hotel, the roadblock said, who wants to feel the breeze in their hair? Not me. Will has better hair anyway. So we also decided before the race that if there was anything Heights related, Will would be the one to do it. Let's talk about the roadblock though, because there's definitely been a lot of conversation online about what played out during the sauerkraut i didn't do it you did i was at the bottom with riley gary and chi all laughing at our partners doing it because it was hilarious to watch but what was it like from your experience during the roadblock so when i when we got there d'angelo had already gone one time and d'angelo and hung were already making their way up the stairs so when we got there Madison was coming down and I think he had just finished his first attempt. I got harnessed up. I go up the stairs and Madison is at the top waiting to go again. Madison tells me that there are letters. Pay attention to the letters. We have to unscramble them. But at that moment, I don't think either one of us really assumed that we would get help from the other team the other teams like it wasn't like a major part but at this moment it's just me and madison and so madison goes down it was like a weird moment where they made you sit but you never felt them clip you in you <laughs> never felt them like be like okay tighten it up you know like here's two strings you're good they made you sit and then they go okay push off and stand up and you're like um did you Am I good? Like, am I going to be okay? <laughs> and literally, you just stood up and it was like you were falling. And there's like two like super important things. You had just, there's a lot of important things about this because it was difficult. You had just walked up 15 flights of stairs. There was a massive spotlight on your face that you can see in the episode. So it was harder to see things. The lights of the letters were like intermittently changing not all at the same time. You didn't really know how many letters there were at first. The letters disappeared about halfway down the building. And then you saw just the ground and you flattening as a pancake as you die. Then <laughs> you're also on your tummy where like it just feels weird to be lowering to the ground face first. So there's all these elements around you doing this challenge that you kind of have to overcome in those first 20 seconds because the letters are flashing. You won't see them very long. But before I even got to the ground, Madison is yelling up to me, the word is sauerkraut. And I'm like, okay, great. I know all the letters definitely would have had to do it again. But now I don't have to because he just told me the answer. And at that moment, had no idea what had just transpired between Gary and D'Angelo or Hung and Chi. We were like, 
I was at the top, they were yelling at the bottom, they waited at the bottom, and we didn't learn that they waited until the pit stop. But meanwhile, I... happened. No, but I knew. I was down there. I mean, granted, I think it's so admirable of Hung. I think Hung is an incredible woman. She's true to her word. Again, I think... That's when those relationships are important. I think those relationships kind of come into play. It's not it's not a foreign concept to The Amazing Race. Yeah. It's happened on many seasons, teams helping teams. So, I mean, obviously it worked in our favor. But like you said, you probably would have had to gone one more time in order to get the mm, word. Probably two more times. I had all the letters the first time. Like, I was trying to unscramble them. But I think that initial fear takes over where you, like, can't coherently think or process anything. Um, So when I got down, I think I had all the letters. But, like, to be able to make a word, there was no way. I would have had to do it at least one or two more times before I even was, like, ready to start unscrambling them. Because you couldn't write anything down. I don't even remember the rules about asking others for help that were on the street. I don't know what those rules were. I don't remember. Um... But do I think that I would have stayed to help other teams? It kind of depends. If I would have been in first, maybe. But like, I think there's I, a lot of there's a lot of decisions that you you can easy to say hindsight's twenty twenty. Right. I would have done this, or I would have. But you don't know in that moment what you would have done. After completing the roadblock, we got our clue for the detour, which was belt it out or belch it out. <laughs> and honestly, I don't remember reading the clue and thinking that it was beer yoga. Did we? Like, I don't remember. I remember it a little differently because we definitely knew that it had something to do with beer. Right, but we didn't know to what extent. But because the name was Belch. It freaked me out. Fun fact about James. At this point in our lives, James, (laughs) I had never heard James burp. Like, he physically couldn't burp. I couldn't, yeah. Like... So I was worried. We were worried that if if at the end or in the middle, like you have to like do something belching after you drink a whole beer, whatever happen. We were worried that was our concern that James couldn't burp. Yeah, Mm. it is what it is. But also, like, who wouldn't want to perform? Like, you're a dancer. I grew up doing musical theater. I just feel like it worked out the way it was supposed to. Like this detour was and way more fun. Like made for us. So we arrived to the Ball House Berlin and we get decked out in our chicken outfits, which is so much fun. It's the first time on the race that we've put on costumes, and we grab our instructor, go into the the training room, if you will. And when she starts singing in German, you could see our faces. We were very concerned about what we were getting ourselves into, not really knowing too much what we were going to be judged on. And I definitely started to panic a little bit. Um, I was very concerned. Yeah. (laughs) Because German is not an easy language. German is a very harsh language. And so you're looking at this paper with the words. It wasn't a short song. It was actually pretty long. And... You had your lines to learn. I had my lines to learn. It was a back and forth. But even looking at the paper, you couldn't figure out how to pronounce the words just off of your own knowledge. You needed like the German translation to say that, oh, (laughs) I-C-H is ich and not itch. So like you really needed that teacher. And so we're looking at this. She's singing at us. I have no idea where she is at on this paper as she's singing. So I get a little like, whoa, girl. What's going on? But she starts with me. We start mine first because I was the first verse. It goes way better than I expected of just like getting it down. You were very good at it. I like, very good at it. It clicked really easy when you broke it down like in little verse, like <laughs> little little lines. But when James, we get to the second verse, James is like, I can't do this. I can't do this. We've got to switch. So... We've got to switch. And I'm like. <laughs> Hold on, like, you literally can do this. Like, you're not incapable of doing this. We've just got to be patient. It's going to take a second. Because we didn't know that when you perform, there were the cue cards. No, I literally thought we would have to memorize it verbatim. I mean, granted, there was definitely a pro to having a lot of it locked down. But, you know, after some training and after some time working with our wonderful instructor... We decided to throw ourselves into the ring of fire and perform. And that's when we noticed the cue card. So we're like, let's just give it our all. And if it doesn't work out, then great. We know what we need to perfect, which is kind of the same mentality we had when doing the bottle dance in Paraguay. You just kind of throw yourselves into the judging routine so you can actually pick up on what it is you're being judged on. So we went back to our, our trainer for like not even five minutes, talked it through 
try to figure out what we needed to work on. And then when we went back out there, we figured, okay, no, we thought we went all out. Now is the time we go all out, <laughs> all out. And it was so much fun. <laughs> I mean, granted, we probably felt super stupid in the moment. Or looked super stupid. I mean, but we like, did look kind of dumb. Just singing with those gentlemen, like, it, like they're so talented. And it really was an honor to perform with them. And I'm so glad we did this detour. It was just a lot of fun. The one regret I have is not keeping those yellow furry pants. So we're fourth. Not too shabby. We're right in the middle, especially with seven teams left. Just to give some context about our time in Berlin, this was actually Thanksgiving Day. And yeah. so you see in the in the beginning of the Kazakhstan episode that we're waiting around at the hostel for Haley and Kaylin to walk in. And we're all like, you know, we're already starting to eat our food. You can see that some of us had showered and changed clothes and holding warm tea. And there's bonus footage of us and our time in this hostel. It was so much fun. But I can't reiterate enough how these moments on the race are so special because I maybe it's yeah. just for our cast. I don't know. But we collectively as seven teams took ourselves out of the race and spent the entire night connecting even more so than we had on the previous legs as human beings. Yeah. And D'Angelo was incredible at asking such profound questions that sparked the best conversations. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, they there was like a huge buffet, we had desserts, we all sat around in these really nice couches and talked for hours. And it was like the first time that they got to know our relationship. We talked about coming out. We and talked about our like coming out stories. Like, the fact that we wanted to get married, adopt children. Like, there's a lot of, like, dynamics we learned. We learned about Hung and Chi and their relationship. We learned about some of the other teens and their significant others at Leo home. and Alana about Leo their and, relationship. Mm -hmm. And uh, Aparna, who's like, I'm ready to get engaged. And, like, here we are two yes. years later. <laughs> like, this is, like, the coolest part. It's like, two years later, like... Leo and Alana are married now, and Aparna is engaged now. And so, like, these moments that we shared two years ago, just to see that we've remained as close as we have, to see these life moments happen for each other, is something that I, I'm so grateful for of our amazing race experience. And to say, like, every single team on our season was so competitive, <laughs> but was also able to separate Game competition from, from reality. Yes. We bonded every single day while we were all there. And yes, we competed against each other, but like it didn't in any way affect those real relationships that we were forming every single day, getting to know each other, the, the little things that you do as a person and things about relationships. like. It was so wonderful to know that every team was able to make that huge distinction between this is a game, this is real, like competition aside, like we love everybody, we're going to get to know everybody. That was like a huge like thing about this entire cast and especially at Thanksgiving because whatever had happened that day, like or the legs, or prior, the legs prior, it was pushed aside and we matter. were just thankful that we were there together. and. Um, getting to know each other on a, a super deep level, those seven teams. Yeah. Minus, I mean, to be honest, Haley and Kaylin showed up late, and we were all like <laughs> ready to go to bed. But but we stayed up, we stayed up and talked to them, up. and heard about their experience, and heard about their day. And that's when the blonde bandits got their nickname, stealing those non-elimination legs from the other teams. God. They are the queens of luck. We all love and adore them. They're so fantastic. They have such great spirits to them in The Amazing Race. So, yeah. And they're, they're constantly positive, always, like, uplifting each other. They're just a very good energy. So it's like, it's like one of those moments where, like, oh, bummer, like, a team didn't get eliminated because <laughs> you want to progress in the competition. But, like, of course, with Haley and Kaylin, it's like, oh, my gosh, yes. <laughs> and also you're like, of course it's of course, of course it's y'all. Yeah. Their luck has been incredible. Impeccable. Yeah. I think that about wraps up our recap for our time in Berlin. And we are going to recap Kazakhstan, but that'll be a separate video, so make sure you check it out.